Good day class. Today is Tuesday, November 9, 2021. Week 2 of second quarter. Our subject for today is Science 8. The most essential learning competency are the following. Differentiate the number 1. Epicenter of an earthquake from its focus. 2. Intensity of an earthquake from its magnitude. And number 3. Active fault and inactive faults. Lesson title, The Quake Starts. Where does an earthquake start? The breaking of the rocks will start at the point where the rocks are weakest. This spot where the first break occurs is called the focus or hypocenter. Hypo means under or beneath. The focus is the origin or the center of the earthquake. It is located underground. The epicenter, a point on the surface of the earthquake which is directly above the focus of an earthquake and where the earthquake vibrations reach first is called epicenter. FP means surface. The most violent shaking occurs here. How strong is the earthquake? An earthquake may be described in two ways. One, intensity. Two, magnitude. The intensity of an earthquake gives us an idea of how strong or weak the shaking is or simply by describing the effects of earthquake on people or surroundings. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, PBOX, uses the PEIS or PBOX Earthquake Intensity Scale to describe the intensity of earthquake in the Philippines. PBOX PEIS or PBOX Earthquake Intensity Scale. PBOX Earthquake Intensity Scale. One, scarcely perceptible. Two, slightly felt. Three, weak. Four, moderately strong. Five, strong. Six, very strong. Seven, destructive, 8, very destructive, 9, devastating, 10, completely devastating. P-Box Earthquake Intensity Scale Intensity 1, sparsely perceptible, noticeably to people under favorable circumstances and delicately balanced objects are disturbed slightly. Intensity number two is slightly felt. Felt by few individuals at rest indoors. Hanging objects swing slightly. Intensity three, weak. Felt by many people indoors in upper floors. Some people experience dizziness in hanging objects swing moderately. Intensity 4. Moderately strong. Felt generally by people indoors and some people outdoors. Light sleepers are awakened. Hanging objects swing noticeably. Dinner plates, glasses, windows, indoors, rappel. Intensity 5 is strong, generally felt by most people indoors and outdoors. Many sleeping people are awakened. Some are frightened, some run. Strong shaking and rocking felt throughout the building. Hanging objects swing violently. Intensity 6, very strong. Some people lose their balance. Motorists feel like driving in flat tires. 
heavy objects move. Wall plaster may crack. Very old and poorly built structures are slightly damaged. Intensity 7. Destructive. People find it difficult to stand in upper floors. Heavy objects topple. Some well-built structures are slightly damaged. Intensity 8. Very destructive. People find it difficult to stand even outdoors. Many well-built buildings and bridges are considerably damaged. Landslides and rock falls occur. Man-made structures sink, tilt, or topple due to liquefaction and lateral spreading. Fissures in folds, rupture may be observed. Intensity 9. Devastating. People are forcibly thrown to ground. Most buildings are totally damaged. Bridges are destroyed. Utility posts, towers, and monuments are broken. Landslides and liquefaction with lateral spreading and sand boils are widespread. Intensity 10. Completely devastating. Man-made structures are destroyed. Massive landslides and liquefaction. River forces change. Utility posts, towers, and monuments are broken. Another way of describing the strength of an earthquake is by magnitude. It is measured using seismograph on a Richter scale. The Richter scale, also called the Richter magnitude scale, is a measure of energy released. The greater the magnitude, the stronger the earthquake. To distinguish the two, intensity is expressed using Roman numeral, while magnitudes uses Hindu-Arabic numerals. Earthquakes with a magnitude of 2 may or may not be felt. Those that are felt by most people have a magnitude of 4. Magnitude 6 can lead to a lot of damage in highly populated areas. Earthquakes with a magnitude of 7 can cause severe damage. A magnitude of 8 or 9 results in widespread destruction, especially near the epicenter. Magnitude, it is the energy released by an earthquake at the focus. It is calculated from earthquakes recorded by an instrument called seismograph. Intensity, it is the strength of an earthquake perceived and felt by people in a certain locality. Intensity is generally higher near the epicenter. Learning task one. Read the article found on the next page about the earthquake that happened in the zone last 1990. Answer the questions briefly. 1990 earthquakes wreck Havoc in the Philippines. More than 1,000 people are killed when a 7.7 .7 magnitude of earthquake strikes Luzon Island in the Philippines on this day in 1990. The massive tremor wreaked havoc across a sizable portion of Luzon, the country's largest island, with Baguio City suffering the most devastating effects. The epicenter of the quake which struck at 4.26 p.m. was north of Manila in the Nueva Ecija province. Reports indicate that the shaking went on for nearly a full minute. Collapsing buildings were the main cause of damage and death. Getting out of a multi-story building was a good safety precaution that afternoon. Although many people were injured, and a few even died in stampeds of others doing the same thing. At Christian College, 
a six-story building completely collapsed, trapping approximately 250 students and teachers inside. Heroic rescue efforts saved many, but some victims who did not die in the collapse were found dead later from dehydration because they were not pulled out in time. All types of buildings, including several resort hotels in Baguio, known as the Philippines' summer capital, suffered tremendous damage. Most of the city's 100,000 res residents slept outdoors that evening and during the following week. After to return to their homes amid the frequent aftershocks for days, workers pulled bodies from the demolished buildings in Baguio. The best estimate is that 1,000 bodies were eventually recovered. At least another 1,000 people suffered serious injuries. Rescue efforts were hampered severely because the three main roads in the city were blocked by landslides. Hundreds of motorists were stranded on the road as well. Outside of Baguio, a chemical factory fire also caused terrible damage. The tobacco, gold, and copper mine in the area lost 30 workers when a mine collapsed. Baguio sitting on at least seven fault lines, is now listed as one of the most risk-prone cities in Asia. In addition to the risk of earthquakes, the area's high annual rainfall increases the likelihood of deadly landslides. American military personnel stationed in the Philippine archipelago took part in the relief effort. The area was revisited by disaster less than a year later when Mount Pinatubo erupted. Some geologists believe the two events were connected. Guide questions. 1. Where is the epicenter of the earthquake? 2. How many individuals are affected by the earthquake? 3. Discuss how devastating a 7.7 .7 magnitude earthquake is. 4. When an earthquake occurs, where would shaking be greater, near the epicenter or away from the epicenter? 5. Where would damage be more, near the epicenter or away from the epicenter? 6. Where would the intensity be higher? near the epicenter or away from the epicenter. Get ready. Your teacher will call you to recite. Learning Task 2. Match Richter magnitudes indicated in column A with the earthquake effect found in column B. Column A are the magnitudes and B are the descriptions. Number 1, magnitude 7. What is the answer? It's letter E, cause severe damage. Number 2, magnitude of 5. What is the answer? The answer is B as in dog, felt by most people. 3. Magnitude of 2. What is the answer? The correct answer is letter F, may not be felt. Number 4. Magnitude of 4. What is the answer? The correct answer is G. Furniture moves. Number five, magnitude of eight and up. 
what is the correct answer? It's letter B. Widespread destruction. Number 6. Magnitude of 6. What is the correct answer? The correct answer is letter A. Lead to a lot of damage. And number 7. Magnitude of 3. What is the correct answer? The correct answer is letter C. Felt little by people. Okay, hope you got all correct answers. Where do earthquakes occur? A fault line is defined as a geological fracture wherein the movement of masses of rocks has displaced parts of the Earth's crust. A rapid movement of a fault line may produce a powerful energy that can trigger a strong earthquake. There are five active fault lines in the country, namely the Western Philippine Fault, the Eastern Philippine Fault, the South of Mindanao Fault, Central Philippine Fault, and the Marikina Fault System. An active fault is a fault that is likely to have another earthquake sometimes in the future. Faults are commonly considered to be active if there has been movement observed or evidence of seismic activity during the last 10 years. Active faulting is considered to be a geologic hazard and related to earthquakes as a cause. Effects of movement on an active fault include strong ground motion, surface faulting, tectonic deformation, landslides and rock falls, liquefaction, tsunamis, and seches. In relation to fracking, there are theories that fracking process can disrupt active fault or passively active in inactive or dormant fault. Seismologists all over the world are actively studying areas in the world where fracking takes place to either validate or dispute these theories. Fault classifications. Number one, active faults are a structure along which we expect displacement to occur. The process that produces displacement across a fault continuously. All shallow earthquakes occur on active faults. Number two is inactive faults. Are structures that we can identify but which do not have earthquakes. If a fault has been inactive for a million years, it is certainly safe to call it inactive. Distribution of active faults in trenches in the Philippines. Learning test 3. Read its questions carefully. Choose the letter of the correct answer. 1. What point along the fold were movements first occur? A. Epicenter. B. Focus. C. Intensity. D. Magnitude. The correct answer is B. Focus. Two. What point on the Earth's surface is directly above the focus? A. Epicenter. B. Pole. C. Intensity. D. Magnitude. The correct answer is letter A. At the center. Three. Which agency of the government 
in the Philippines is monitoring the movement of the Earth's crust. A. DNR B. DOST C. Pag-asa B. P-box The correct answer is letter D. P-box 4. It is a sudden movement of the Earth's crust caused by the release of stress accumulated along geologic poles or by volcanic activity A. Earthquake B. Flood C. Typhoon D. Tsunami The correct answer is letter A. Earthquake 5 five things to do before, during, and after an earthquake. Get ready. Your teacher will call you to recite. Summary. Differentiate the following. Number one, epicenter of an earthquake from its focus. 2. Intensity of an earthquake from its magnitude and 3. Active and inactive focus. Focus or hypocenter, hypo means under or beneath, is the spot where the first break occurs, while epicenter, epi means surface, is a point on the surface of the earthquake which is directly above the focus of an earthquake and where the earthquake vibrations reach first. The most violent shaking occurs here. Magnitude. It is the energy released by an earthquake at the focus. It is calculated from earthquakes recorded by instrument called seismograph. While intensity is the strength of an earthquake perceived and felt by people in a certain locality, intensity is generally higher near the center. Active faults are structure along which we expect displacement to occur. The process that produces displacement across a fault continuously. All shallow earthquakes occur on active faults. An active fault is a fault that is likely to have another earthquake sometime in the future. Poles are commonly considered to be active if there has been movement observed or evidence of seismic activity during the last 10 years, while an inactive poles are structures that we can identify but which do not have earthquakes. If a fault has been inactive for a million years, so it's certainly safe to call it inactive. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you.